Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mass Retirees Weekly Update. Today's Friday, May 3rd. I'm Sean Duhamel. Thank you so much for joining with us and tuning in again this week. Now, before I jump into the news of the week, I want to remind everyone that today, Friday, at 11 a.m., we will be holding our annual area meeting on the North Shore at the Peabody Marriott. Again, it kicks off at 11 a.m. All association meetings are open to all members of our association. You're more than welcome to bring a guest. Um, we have some great door prizes for those of you who will be in attendance. We'll be giving full reports on everything that's pertinent to public retirement from health insurance to the COLA to the basic life insurance legislation that made its way through the House of Representatives last week. And of course, the windfall elimination provision and the government pension offset are always hot topics. Our area meetings are a great way for us to interact directly one-on-one -on -one with our members, for you to be able to ask us questions, bring complaints, concerns, or if you're having a specific problem that's related to your retirement, such as a health insurance claims issue, it's a good opportunity for you to come and talk to us. So again, today, 11 a.m. in Peabody. Next Friday at 11 a.m., we will be in Dorchester at Florian Hall, which of course is the home of Boston Firefighters Local 718. That meeting also kicks off at 11 a.m. And then the first week of June, we will be down on the Cape in Hyannis for our annual Cape Cod meeting. So we have a lot of area meetings coming up. Um, if you are in any of those locations, please come on by and say hello. Um, you're always welcome and we look forward to seeing you. Now, in terms of the news of the week, the big news is that on Tuesday, we submitted on your behalf our official testimony to the U.S. Congress on the Social Security Windfall Elimination Provision, the WEP, as well as the Government Pension Offset, the GPO. Um, Tuesday was the deadline to submit, to submit testimony sorry, um, relative to the hearing that took place on April 16th before the Subcommittee on Social Security. Um, that hearing, there were four official um, witnesses that testified, but with every congressional hearing, um, Congress welcomes and invites the general public and advocacy groups, um, stakeholders and so forth to submit written testimony on our thoughts on the hearing. So we have done that. Um, there, could, there was a link, if you're watching this and you've received today's email message from us, there's a link in the email message, but the official testimony can also be found on our website, which is massretirees.com so you can read it for yourself. We're also gonna publish the testimony in the July edition of The Voice to make sure that all members are aware clearly of what our position is. Now, it is, should be clear to all members that mass retirees, our goal is to see an end come to both the WEP and the GPO. Our belief is that these laws are unfair, they're unjust, and that they need to change. All of our members, all public retirees, should receive every penny in Social Security benefits that you earned, that you paid for, and now in retirement that you depend upon for retirement income. Every retiree should, should expect no less than what you paid into the system, but also no more than that. That's what's fair and that's what we are driving toward um, with our advocacy. Now I know that these videos and our messages that go out every week are viewed beyond our general membership. In fact, it is quite common that we'll get questions and comments from retirees as far away as California and we welcome that. As a matter of fact, we are very appreciative of the support, for instance, that comes from our colleagues in Texas and the members of the Texas Retired Teachers Association. Um, the message and the analysis that came out from us a couple of weeks ago relative to that hearing on the 16th, we got a lot of positive feedback, a lot of questions, particularly from our friends in Texas who we have worked very, very closely with for more than a decade, driving toward the same goal. And I wanna thank Tim Lee and his t team at the TRTA um, for their, their friendship and their support and our continued collaboration around these issues and that together, we're gonna to find a way to get this done and get to yes. As I said, it is our goal to end the weapon, the GPO. However, we also have to be flexible in knowing that full repeal, absent a larger overhaul of social security in general, is going to be very, very difficult, if not impossible to achieve. 
Despite the fact that we now have 315 or so co-sponsors of HR 82, and I want to say a, a word of thanks for the accomplishment of the various organizations at the grassroots level um, who have been working very hard for the last couple of years to gain 315 co-sponsors. However, this is not the first time that we have seen a supermajority of co-sponsors on these bills. As a matter of fact, over the past 40 years, it's been relatively routine um, that in various congressional sessions that we will get to a supermajority of support in the House. That does not necessarily mean that a bill is going to be brought to the floor and voted on. What we take it to mean when someone co-sponsors a bill oftentimes is that that member of Congress, and the same thing applies here at the legislative level in Massachusetts or in any other state, when you co-sponsor a bill, it doesn't necessarily mean that you believe that that bill should pass today. It's showing an indication of general support and acknowledgement that this is an issue that needs to be dealt with. Um, and as much as we would like to see any of these bills brought to the floor for a vote, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. So what I'm trying to say is we are going to continue to work as hard as we can to keep the pressure on Congress to act in 2024 some relief has to come to retirees. We know every day we get calls, emails, text messages, social media comments from members who are losing hundreds of dollars a month, thousands of dollars a year, and are suffering financially because of the weapon, the GPO. Some relief has to come to our members. It, this has been 41 years in the making and it is long overdue but we need to be willing to compromise in order to get there. If we hold out for the perfect solution, whether it be full repeal or something else, oftentimes the, the, the perfect can be the enemy of the good. And we cannot sit by and allow another generation of retirees to be sacrificed while we are holding out for the perfect solution to that, um, to this problem that, that may never come. We just don't know. So we're gonna continue to do all we can um, to get the best deal for our members that's possible. And we are working as hard as we can to make sure that whatever legislation comes before the House and the US Senate contains both the WEP and the GPO in terms of relief for retirees who, who are harmed by both of these unfair federal laws. So please go to our website, read the full text of our testimony. Um, I think we laid out our position pretty effectively. And if you have questions, comments, um, please, we, we want to hear from our members. We want to continue to, to learn and be able to effectively advocate on your behalf going forward. And that's exactly what we are going to do. Now, in the coming weeks, you're going to be hearing more from us specifically about things happening here in Massachusetts. As you know, last week we scored a massive victory um, when the House of Representatives not only passed legislation creating the COLA Commission, but also, create, also passed legislation increasing the basic life insurance benefit for state retirees and active employees for the first time in 39 years. The Senate will be taking up their budget in about three weeks. We are already um, in conversations with the Senate leadership in the hope that they not only support the COLA Commission, which again was originally proposed by Governor Healy, and then the House has also approved it, but we're also very hopeful um, that the Senate will see fit to approve the life insurance increase as well, that we can get it on the governor's desk, and we have every confidence um, that the governor will see fit to sign um, that increase into law. Again, will be the first time in 39 years, so it's been a very long time coming. In the meantime, there's also veterans legislation in the works here in Massachusetts just earlier today. Um, the Joint Committee on Veterans Affairs released a omnibus bill um, to, to, that will coincide with the Memorial Day holiday coming up <clears throat> to increase veterans benefits and we will we'll be working uh, with our legislative partners in the hope of increasing veterans benefits for public retirees as well. So there's a lot of things going on, a lot in the works and we'll be reporting to you in the weeks ahead in terms of the details of, this, of, of these different initiatives. So you, all, you have all of the facts and information that, that you need in order to be well informed. But again, thank you for tuning in today and we'll be back to you again next Friday with an update. Bye-bye everybody.